There's no denying that many motorcycles live much harder lives than the rest of vehicles on the road. They're routinely ridden to redline, they're dropped, and they're stalled, but yet there are certain bikes out there that reach unthinkable mileage without substantial engine work or rebuilding. Many bikes can bust one million dank nooners without even breaking a sweat, while much of a motorcycle's longevity is a result of the owner, both in regards to the scrupulous nature of their maintenance schedule, as well as their proclivity for squiddly behavior. But despite this, there are some bikes that have just been unequivocally known to be downright unkillable. So without further ado, let's talk about 10 ridiculously reliable motorcycles. Speaking of unkillable, today's video is sponsored by our friends over at Rockform. I'll tell you more about them later in the show. Let's get into it. Honda has by and far become the poster child of reliability for the last 60 odd years, and it is not without good reason. From their motorcycles, scooters, cars, outboard motors, and lawn equipment, Honda machinery just works forever. Honda has people riding their motorcycles in every part of the world in varying applications amidst questionable infrastructure, and yet they just keep on running forever with minimal maintenance. When you think of ultra-reliable motorcycles, you usually think of ridiculously simple, low-revving, small displacement machines that are overbuilt for their low-stress applications. But the first bike on the list today is actually a sport bike, the Honda CBR 600 F4i. Launched in the early 2000s, this motorcycle aimed to build upon the success of Honda's pre previous 600 class models, while introducing innovations to meet the evolving demands of Y2K sport bike chads around the world. The 600cc four-cylinder engine underwent improvements for their previous 600cc models to deliver a potent combination of horsepower and torgos, making 110 horsepower and 46 claimed torgarinos. The Honda CBR 600 F4i received widespread acclaim from riders upon its release. Its well-balanced performance, user-friendly handling, and comfortable ergonomics made it an attractive option for a broad range of riders. The fast boy community appreciated the CBR 600 F4i for its versatility, capable of dominating track days while remaining comfortable enough for extended rides on the road. Reliability has long been a hallmark of Honda motorcycles, and the CBR 600 F4i is no exception. The four-cylinder engine, coupled with Honda's overachievement in quality manufacturing, resulted in a bike known for its dependability. Regular maintenance and care have proven to extend the longevity of the CBR F4i, and many riders have attested to its durability over the years of ownership. The next bike on our list is the humble Ninja 250R. Before the Ninja 400 became the gold standard for entry-level sport bikes, the 250 paved the way for burgeoning street squids around the world. The Ninja 250 allowed even the least experienced riders to don the Ninja livery and pretend they were Tom Cruise while ripping at a modest 65 miles an hour when pinned in fifth gear. Introduced in the late 1980s, the Ninja 250R was designed to provide an accessible and engaging experience for novice riders while maintaining the sporty aesthetics synonymous with the Ninja brand. The bike's lightweight chassis and nimble handling contributed to its reputation as an ideal platform for learning and mastering riding skills. One of the Ninja 250R's standout features has been its general reliability. The bike's parallel twin engine strikes a balance between usability and efficiency, contributing to its reliability and ease of maintenance even if it is a little ugly and 80s looking. The public reception of the 250R was overwhelmingly positive, establishing it as a perennial favorite among baby squids of years past. Its stylish sport bike appearance, inspired by its larger ninja siblings of the time, appealed to riders seeking a visually appealing machine without compromising on user-friendly features. The 250R made way for the Ninja 300, 400, and the soon-to-be 500, which, in my opinion, we should have just stopped at the 400. That's the best one. If you want a reliable product that will take on your most challenging adventures with ease, you need to get yourself a Rockform phone case. Rockform makes the best-in-class phone cases designed specifically for motorcyclists. Their extra-strength MagMax technology makes nearly five times stronger connection than a traditional MagSafe case. Rockform sells cases that offer unparalleled protection for your phone, and while their cases are awesome as a standalone product offering 360 degrees of drop protection, they really shine when integrated seamless with the other products in their lineup. They have handlebar or stem mounts for every type of motorcycle, so you can keep your phone easily accessible for turn-by-turn -turn navigation or music selection when your phone is paired with a communicator system. Rockform really have created the industry standard for motorcycle accessories, and we've been proud partners with them for over four years now. And you can get yourself a Rockform case and handlebar mount by following the link below and using the code YN25 for 25% off your order. Again, that is rockform.com with the code YN25 at checkout for 25% off of your order. Thank you so much to Rockform for the sustained support on the channel, and let's get back to the show. All right, listen, if we're talking about unkillable bikes, some sport touring bikes may come to mind. If there was ever 
Whenever a bike that was built with reliability at the forefront of design, it is one that is meant to be ridden for hundreds of miles at a time. A touring motorcycle that's known for being practically unkillable is the FJR 1300. This bike's been in production since 2001 in its current trim, and it still stands as the current FJR model, having evolved from the FJR 1200 and 1100 that have been touring stables since the mid 80s. The FJR 1300 has a big stockin' 1298cc four-cylinder engine that's been tuned to make usable and sustainable power. 140 ponies might not sound like a lot when you consider the magnitude of this bike, but that just means Yamaha didn't have to squeeze every last drop of juice out of this power plant. It's understressed and built to last. This bike's been in production for over 20 years and Yamaha's made continuous improvements and advances that further the durability of this machine. Ask any sports touring dad on bike night about the FJR 1300 and they'll all have a buddy that rides one with over 150,000 miles. When talking about reliable motorcycles, it is impossible to not mention the Honda Goldwing. Honda created the gold standard for touring motorcycles in the 50 years of continuous evolution. There are plenty of accounts of gold wings with hundreds of thousands of miles on them. There's even the 1 million mile gold wing, which is impressive regardless of it having the engine swap three times in those 1 million miles. A motorcycle that has been easily eclipsed by the gold wing in the discussion of reliability is the Honda Valkyrie. The Valkyrie was originally produced for just six short years from 1997 to 2003, though it was briefly reintroduced for the 2014 and 15 model years before being discontinued entirely. The Honda Valkyrie made its debut as a variant of the Honda GL1500 Goldwing. The Valkyrie, however, was reimagined as a power cruiser, featuring a stripped down style emphasizing the massive 1520cc flat six engine. This engine, derived from the Goldwing, was modified slightly to give the Valkyrie a slight bump in power. Even though the Valkyrie didn't have as many creature comforts as the wing, it still used the same power plant and is equally as reliable. Another motorcycle with reputation for reliability is the Kawasaki KLR650. If you want a motorcycle to last a long time, gravitating towards simplicity usually works well in the bike's favor. And the KLR650 is about as simple as it gets. The earliest KLR models debuted in 1987 and were only one generation detached from animal-powered farm implements built for the same purpose prior to this bike. And despite its archaic utility, the first generation KLR remained largely unchanged until 2007. And frankly, even brand new motorcycle models are relatively true to the original design, although they are now fuel injected. The KLR650 uses a 652cc liquid-cooled single-cylinder engine that makes about 35 horsepower and 35 foot-pounds of torque. I feel like when the torque and the horsepower figures for an engine are nearly identical, that usually means it's going to be pretty darn unkillable. The KLR650 is so dependable the US military has used them in many applications, oftentimes even modifying the engines to be using diesel fuels. The KLR is a motorcycle that should have been bred out of Kawasaki's lineup many times over, but due to its reliable workhorse nature and grandfathered emissions, it's managed to stick around for almost 40 years. And while the reign of the SV650 is coming to an end as the influx of parallel twin middleweight naked bikes shift the paradigm of the naked roadster, it still stands as a motorcycle that has stayed relevant far longer than you'd imagine possible. The eternal allure of the SV650 is in part due to the dependability of the platform. You can find a six owner SV650 with 35,000 miles that still runs like a top. These bikes are pretty darn approachable given their stature, though a bit more powerful than a traditional beginner bike. So as a result, many an SV650 gets bought as a first motorcycle and then crashed or dropped or rebuilt and turned into varying degrees of wretched custom monstrosities. The SV650 makes 75 horsepower and 47 foot-pounds of torque with a 645cc liquid-cooled V-twin engine. Suzuki might not be anywhere near close to making the most progressive or boundary-pushing motorcycle, but the bikes work as intended. The SV650 can be pushed hard at the racetrack or just used around town without fail. When SV650s ultimately die, it usually comes down to user error, like they ran it for 5,000 miles without oil or accidentally dropped it into a car shredder. The Harley-Davidson Evo Sportster has always been hailed as one of the most reliable motorcycles ever made as well. I know a Harley? Come on, Yam, really? That is because it's so darn simple in its design and was built for nearly 50 years. In either the 883 or the 1200cc engine configuration, both engines are incredibly understressed. They rev as low as a V8 truck and make between 45 and 60 horsepower. These engines are so understressed that Harley-Davidson would sell you thousands of dollars worth of parts to make 25% more horsepower and still keep your warranty intact. They aren't even liquid-cooled, and there are whole message boards describing trying to figure out if the oil temp at which an 
Evo Sports Drover overheats to the point of causing damage, and the consensus is that no one's managed to find said temperature yet. These bikes are not powerful or modern or lightweight, but if you change the oil every so often and don't do anything stupid, it can feasibly run forever. They don't even need valve adjustments. Since the Evo Sportster is no longer around, the air-cooled Royal Enfield models offer some of the same ridiculously simple air-cooled reliability. Royal Enfield motorcycles are super popular in India where they're produced, where they're ridden on rough roads day in and day out, so their low maintenance requirements and ease of use make them pretty darn reliable as well. The only reason they don't get a dedicated spot on the list is because some of the other cheaper components in the bike may not stand the test of time as well as the engines themselves. Another class of motorcycle that is notorious for its unending desire to serve the rider for thousands and thousands of miles is the humble dual sport. Dual sport motorcycles are, again, praised for their bulletproof simplicity. Can you see a trend here? So if a dual sport motorcycle is super reliable, a dual sport from Honda must be the pinnacle of build quality. Before the current entry level dual sport in their model lineup, the CRF 300L, there was the CRF 250L. This bike was sold from 2012 until it was overshadowed by the 300 in 2020. It had a liquid cooled 250cc single cylinder engine that made 25 horsepower and 17 foot pounds of torque. Utilitarian in its ethos, it had everything you need and nothing you don't. It was fuel injected, had a neutral riding position, and all the necessary DOT lighting equipment. Using an engine from the CBR 250R street bike, these bikes can run forever with minimal wear, a stark contrast to a dedicated trail or race dirt bike with short service intervals. It is not uncommon to see people still going on post-apocalyptic adventures on their 250Ls with nearly 4,000 miles on the clock. Aside from sport turning machines, adventure bikes also necessitate bulletproof power plants with lax service intervals. If you're going to be riding from Alaska to the southern tip of South America, you can't be stopping to adjust your valves midway through. A motorcycle that's been known to roll ungodly numbers across the odometer is the BMW 1200GS. Just as the Sportster engine will run forever because of its primitive design built with modern materials and craftsmanship, the 1200GS is also using an archaic engine design that manages to exude functional simplicity. This adventure machine was manufactured from 2004 until 2019 when it was then replaced by the 1250GS. Though for our purposes of highlighting reliability, the models sold prior to 2013 that were strictly air and oil cooled have been the benchmark for simplistic longevity, as were the 1150GS bikes that came prior. These air-cooled 1170cc boxer engines make 110 horsepower and 90 foot-pounds of torque, which further adds to the theory that the closer the horsepower and torque figures are, the more reliable of an engine you'll get. In 2006 and 7, the 1200GS was the best-selling motorcycle from BMW and the most popular motorcycle sold in the UK. These bikes are essentially responsible for creating an adventure touring category, and they've proven pretty darn reliable. And the last motorcycle on the list today is the Honda Super Cub. It is potentially considered to be a scooter by some, but it has an engine and two wheels, so it makes the list for today. The Super Cub was designed by Honda to be ridden endlessly in dense urban areas in the worst conditions possible. It is the best-selling vehicle in the world at over 100 million units. So not just the best-selling motorcycle, but the best-selling vehicle in general. The Super Cub isn't anywhere near the fastest or most capable, but at well over 100 miles per gallon and a bulletproof engine based on 70 years of manufacturing history, the Super Cub is about as reliable as it gets on two wheels. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like these videos, be sure to subscribe so you can always catch the latest content. Thank you again for Rock Form for the support. I'll catch you in the next one. Fact. In the 19th century, the famous American showman P.T. Barnum exhibited what he claimed to be the remains of a mermaid. The Fiji mermaid was presented as a mythical creature, but it was actually a hoax created by sewing the upper body of a monkey onto the tail of a fish. Goodbye. Keep watching Yemi Nerd.